Hey everyone, it's Brandon from Top10Gamer.com coming at you today again with a look at a $2,000 to $2,200 build. Now I know some of you thought that I just wore the same shirt as I did yesterday. Uh, certainly something that I've done before, but this particular day, everything in here smells just fine. Okay, so for this particular build, we're focusing on two areas because when you go into this price range, you want a little something extra out of your PC. So if what we're focusing on is 1440p gaming and 1080p gaming at 144 hertz. Now, you may not know exactly what that means, but let's say that you've got an IPS monitor and you want to play at a 2560 by 1440p resolution. Well, it's going to take your take a lot more uh, from your graphics card to really be able to do that at a good uh, frame rate. And what kind of frame rate do you want in that? About 60 FPS. But it's going to just take a lot more to be able to do that. In addition, let's say that you want to play a game like Battlefield 4 at 1080p at 144 hertz refresh rate. This is also going to be uh, quite a bit of a challenge, especially if you want to play on ultra settings with everything max. It just takes a whole lot. So this particular build is going to focus on accomplishing just that. Now, in the description below, I'm going to put a link to my buddy Joker's uh, page at Joker Productions. Uh, he and I have been uh, talking a little bit on Skype and bouncing some ideas back and forth on each other. And he recently uh, did the video card configuration for this build, uh, two uh, MSI GTX 780s and SLI, so that he could take advantage of his G-Sync kit that he just installed in his ASUS VG248QE. Now, if you're not familiar with that model, uh, very low input lag monitor that uh, has 144 hertz refresh rate and adding G-Sync to it, you just get complete smoothness. Uh, I'm going to use the word that I used about 100 times in my last build, the dream. So Joker is living the dream right now with uh, two, two GTX 780s and SLI powering that uh, incredible monitor. The G-Sync the, the G kits are about 200 bucks. Uh, that along with that monitor is about a $500 setup just for the monitor and then for the graphics card another thousand dollars But if you guys already have the monitor, this is still the the two thousand dollar build That's really what makes it two thousand to twenty five hundred uh, Just depending on whether you have to build have to buy that particular monitor now in the future They'll sell that monitor with the G-Sync enabled and others like it and you'll probably be able to get a little bit uh, better of a deal but uh, if you guys are impatient and need that now that is available, although sold out on uh, EVGA's uh, uh, website. I just I just went to go check that out yesterday. Sorry, I just realized I said EVGA. I meant uh, NVIDIA's website. I'll put a link to that in the description below so you guys can go check that out. Uh, powering on to the rest of the build here uh, for motherboard, we're looking at the ASUS Maximus 6 Hero, probably the best overclocking motherboard in the under $200 category. And really all you need if you're... If you're a power user, unless you're trying to break records, it doesn't get a lot better than this. I really like the, for the 1150 motherboards, it seems like we get a slightly better overclock for the money compared to the previous gen 1155 boards. Okay, for CPU, this is a little bit tricky. Uh, I read an Anantech article uh, pretty recently uh, from mid to, mid to late last year that talks about gaming in 1440p. They only benchmarked four different games, so in my opinion, it's a little bit uh, limited, and, and one of the more taxing games in it is Civilization V, where a CPU like the i7-4770K really came through strong in a dual GPU setup. Um, I think moving forward that a CPU like this would certainly help on graphically intense games where you have a multi-GPU setup. However, Anantec was saying that one like even the Ivy Bridge i5-3570K would be good. That's going to be really up to you whether you want to save that 100 bucks or not. The FX8350 would also be a good choice here. Of course, you'd have to go with a different motherboard than we recommend. Uh, for RAM, we're going with uh, 16 gigabytes of G-Skill Rip Jaws. Uh, for the power supply, we're going with the HX1050. This is a gold certified power supply from Corsair. It's around $200. But it's, uh, you know, it's a professional power supply. Uh, it'll do a fantastic job for you for many years to come. Has a great warranty. Uh, was trying to look for a D6, D6, C Sonic one in this price range as well, but, uh, but couldn't find one for, for a decent price. This one will do just fine. And uh, it should house 
um, and be able to handle those dual graphics cards just fine. I, I did the calculation for this particular build before the overclock and it looks like it's right around 625 watts. So uh, I try to go in general 30% above uh, what I estimate there, which would be what, like another 180 watts or so, 30% uh, more. And then, and then since you're gonna overclock, you just have a little room there, which, which is what I think you want. For case, we're gonna go with something a little different here in the Fractal Define R4. This is a super quiet case. Um, that has foam padding and when you have a multiple uh, card configuration like this and with uh, adding potential fans in the future and things like that it's really a good idea to have a quiet case fractal has a window design that they came out with last year uh, that means that you can still look at your hardware and have a quiet case if you don't care about looking at your hardware you can go with the non windowed version I think it's it's probably only about 10 bucks cheaper. Uh, moving on, hard drive, we're going with that same Western Digital Blue Series W10 Easy EX. It's 60 bucks. You can go with something nicer if you want. I don't really care to because, you know, if I ever expand in the future, normally it's, it's through a solid state drive. And speaking of solid state drives, this build has one. It's a Samsung 840 uh, Evo. The 250 gigabyte version is 145 on Amazon.com. You know, a few years ago, I read some articles that because of, of uh, the, the flash memory that the prices in solid state drives would never come down. And I think that if you've watched the hardware market as close as I have the last year and a half to two years, you can say that that was uh, dead wrong. Uh, for CPU cooler, we're going with the H100i and the Asus optical drive that we typically go with that costs 20 bucks. Okay, as always, we'll have a write-up in the description below. It doesn't always happen the second I put out the video. Sometimes it takes a day for me to, to get the write-up out. Uh, along with benchmarks, any research I've done for this build, credits to any of the people that I've mentioned in the video, things like that. Hopefully you guys like this video. If you do, like and subscribe. This is the end to the PC building series. At this point in time, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be ordering some more parts. I've already got some of them, uh, including this uh, fabulous, uh, I don't know if you can see it there, Elite 130 case that we're gonna be using for uh, a mini ITX build coming up really soon that I'm really excited about. Um, we're gonna be doing some benchmarking there and, and again, working in collaboration, hopefully with some other YouTubers. So uh, hope you guys like this video. Press like and subscribe if you do and we'll see you next time.